So a lot of guys um, on YouTube are talking about methods that don't work anymore. Hey guys, so today we have very special guest, uh, the man, the legend, uh, Attila, right? So Attila has very popular blog for uh, in the industry for so much time. Like you, you've seen different things happening. So I'm very curious, like to to learn today from like what's happening with like affiliate industry overall, um, with marketing industry things that you see happening, things that we are seeing like moving. Away. So very excited this uh, conversation with you so yeah if you can tell more like what's basically happening what's basically happening with the industry um, so for example since last year like what changes you see like coming uh... thanks for having me Alex it's a pleasure um, there's a lot of changes happening in the industry and it's reflected here if when you walk around like last year for example there were way more neutral uh, networks and advertisers here but this year it seems like there's less and that's because it's getting extremely difficult to promote you know like skin diet weight loss and and uh, like ED and muscle enhancement uh, products on Facebook and Google due to policy updates and from the other side of the story the banks and the credit card processing companies have became very strict with these rebills rebills that used to kill it you know a couple years ago where someone would pay 4.95 uh, shipping for a free trial and get a cream or some kind of diet pills and then they would be dinged with like eighty dollar rebill two weeks later mm -hmm. if they didn't call and cancel and uh, this was such a big problem that uh, the credit card companies uh, teamed up and they brought in new rules which pretty much makes it near impossible for offer owners to find processing and uh, to do this offer and that's why there's no cap these days so uh, it's changed it changed a lot and uh, it's heading towards a direction where there's going to be a lot of info like uh, a lot of focus on back-end monetization you know like away from the um, away from all the policies of Facebook and Google so the goal will be to remain compliant on the front end and when you get the lead or the customer that's when you can send them you know stuff like uh, you know like celeb promos about you know that this person is using that product or that person and things like that so in, so basically now instead of like the front end where you would like advertise the software as a front end now you would have it like on the back end and you like you would promote different offers to your existing customers so people who've you you got in your email list or on your customer list that's right yeah that's right alex um what uh is going to happen is the front end can be like a lead generation uh, web page or landing page where you're giving away an ebook or some kind of um, freebie called the lead magnet when you get their email phone number then you send them an email or you send them a sms message and that SMS message is going to contain, you know, the ad that you are not allowed to run on Facebook or Google. So this is the kind of workaround that I, that is going to become more and more common, just because the AI that Facebook and Google has is getting so advanced that it can tell the intent of the ad even before you turn on the cloaker. Like you know, in the past you could work around that by doing safe pages which uh, had some kind of celebrity story or some kind of store but they know they have like a footprint on how affiliates run this stuff so they can tell like if you upload this kind of ad what is the probability that that'll be a cloak that like and then they ban instantly so that's why it's important oh and do you see any other like platforms or like sources of traffic appearing that still are good like sources for affiliates that could be like a replacement for Facebook or, or Google I don't see any kind of replacement for Facebook or Google in the near future I mean there's contenders like rising every other day like TikTok is gaining insane market share but if you look at who's using TikTok that is uh, like young kids you know like my son he's nine he uses TikTok like what can I sell him you know he has to ask me if he wants to buy something and um, 
Another thing is Snapchat. And the problem with Snapchat at the moment is that it's so young that the targeting sucks, you know? Like you go for conversions and you're gonna get shitty inconsistent traffic, no matter which category you go for. They don't have any dynamic tokens, they don't support any kind of, uh, you know, like detailed pixels so you can position it in different parts of the funnel. So that they're not contenders. The only thing that it matured enough to compete somewhat and gaining popularity is native networks. Native networks are always in the shadows of Google and Facebook and they're playing catch up with policies. So if Google banned, I don't know, let's say payday loans, you know, like in March, then native networks are gonna ban it in July. You know, like that's how it works kind of thing. Like they just copy and paste the policy and implement it after Google or Facebook. So yeah, native is still a really, really good traffic source and there's always going to be, you know, push, pop, you know, media buys, redirect traffic, and email and SMS as well. But if it's uh, push and pop, you really have to watch for bot traffic. So one of the tricks to the tricks of the trade to make it work is to filter out the bots. And some placements are just bots, you know, like they're really smart bots that come and click on invisible links on a page, you know. So it's insane. But if you figure out how to clean that, which we actually talk about a lot on my forum, I am affiliate, then you can make money from that traffic channel as well. Um, so Attila has very nice t-shirt, by the way. So um, you, you're talking a lot about like uh, the overall like expert industry, right? Where like a lot of people that don't actually do what they teach, right? So what do you see, like what, what trends you're seeing in that industry specifically where you know, a lot of people just like appearing out of nowhere without any like track record or like uh, proof of concept and they're trying to teach other people without like ha having having done it themselves. Like what trends you're seeing in that industry? Is that like booming or like what is what is happening there? Well, me and uh, fake gurus are like a subject of its own. Like a couple years ago, I wrote my ultimate guide on how to become a fake guru and um, the trends that I'm seeing is that more and more people are popping up out of nowhere with screenshots and rented cars and rented Airbnbs and grabbing these people and suckering them in, you know, with the shiny object syndrome. And when you listen to these guys, they're basically just like, they bought a $20 course on Udemy and they're just telling you that same shit. So a lot of guys um, on YouTube are talking about methods that don't work anymore. And that's how like I discovered your YouTube, actually from Gabriel, I heard about it. And you talk about stuff that works. And I know because in our offers, we run the same stuff, so I know that works, which led me to your one-on-one -on -one consulting where you showed me what I was screwing up. And that's I think that's why it was the best investment, you know, to work with you. But a lot of gurus and fake gurus, they, probably made money in the past and then they use those screenshots and that um, I don't know like that um, past success mm -hmm. as a jumping board you know to promote their guru courses mm -hmm. and their guru courses usually talk about scaling mm -hmm. you and I know that if you have a winner scaling is fucking easy like that's the easiest thing yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it's just you generate lookalikes, you do different additional targeting using audience insights, you know, to try manual or uh, automatic bidding at different levels. So you just, it's all technical shit. And a lot of the gurus focus on this stuff. But people out there, you know, they, um, they need to know how to get started. Yeah. Because they want to quit their nine to five or they want to finally see success, you know, after losing for so many months. And most people don't, you know. I remember when I started working with you, you gave me a product and be like, launch is I guarantee it'll work. And that gave me the confidence that fuck, if the product's right, yeah. it's gonna work, you yeah. know. And most gurus, when you ask me, give me something concrete, they'll be like, oh man, I can't do that, excuse this, excuse that. And people really need something solid, you know to finally see that change, you know, so that they can go in the positive direction because affiliate marketing is so hard. Like, it's failure after failure after failure. And um, 
people don't see the iceberg effect, you know, like you've probably seen it, you know, like what success looks like, like it's uh, like, you know, like a beautiful mountain from the water, yeah, yeah. but what's underneath that mountain is like, you know, five times taller than the one that you see the pinnacle that's sticking out. That's exactly what affiliate marketing is. So basically right now, the, the affiliate marketing is, is getting like harder and harder. That's what you're saying, right? Well, most definitely, because uh, we entered the maturity stage and affiliate marketing is becoming like an everyday kind of household name. Like more and more people are understanding that, wow, you can work, you know, from a laptop and make money like that. So it creates a lot of competition and everybody rips and runs other people's stuff, you know. So with that, you have to do things different if you want to survive. Like, uh, I'm always at the forefront, you know, always educating myself and learning new stuff and thinking about new ways, you know, to be a step ahead of everybody else. Uh, like how Charles Angio used to say or says still, you need to have a moat, you know, and uh, the moat moving forward is, for example, owning the data you know, for your customers so that you can go back and monetize them again and again in the back end. Because uh, affiliates might run an offer and uh, they might not make any money or very slim, but the advertiser that they run the offer for owns the data. So after they got the data, they can sell them who the hell knows what, but you know, it'll be free money because they don't have to pay for the marketing cost. You know, like how much does it cost to send an email? A couple cents, you know, so. You send out one million emails, guaranteed you're gonna make, you know, like 10K at least, you know, so that's basically my answer. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, thank you, Attila. It was a pleasure. I mean, uh, we've connected, like, we've been communicating back and forth. Finally, we've connected here in Barcelona at uh, Feel It World um, Europe. Um, great event. We've had we had some good, good discussions with Attila, good fun. So, yeah, thank you so much uh, for this interview. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to you know, seeing what's happening and uh, watching you monitoring the industry.